co-main event is Anthony Durrell versus um, Caleb, Plant. Caleb Plant. But this is what stood out to me, right? You know, you reek what you sow, right? You reek what you sow. That's, that's a true thing, Jose Jr. You reek what you sow. So when you say things, d don't be looking silly if that karma come back at you. Anthony Durrell, Caleb Plant said this yesterday. He put up a, a post of Bernard Hopkins. Oh, yeah, man. Saying, I'll never let a white boy uh, beat me. And, and Caleb Plant broke it down so eloquently. I did he like said, that. He said, in, in, in life, you know, we it ain't about racist, you know, whoop de whoop. You, you remember what he said, Jay? He said it ain't about, and I'm sorry, we don't have the video clips. It all it happened just a few hours ago, so we don't, we don't really have any of the footage yet. But he essentially said, in life, it's, he, it's not about race to him. Boxing isn't about race to him. Obviously, you know, he's a cultured, uh, he's a cultured dude. And... Uh, and he was just addressing that, uh, you know, why don't you like me, Anthony? And, and Anthony, he kept saying, oh, nobody likes you. Nobody likes you. <laughs> to me, who gives a damn is boxing. Like, it, you want him to hold hands with the rest of his, his division? Uh, so I, I saw what Caleb, I, I like what Caleb Pant had to say. I thought what Anthony Durrell was saying was a little off, man. It, it made no sense. It's not really what you want to talk about in a press conference. You're trying to promote yeah. a fight. And Caleb Plant's married to yeah. a black girl. Yeah, married to a black girl. And then he's going to talk about Talking about he hate him. Why do you hate him, Anthony Durrell? That's like a, you hate that's, that's then a like, heavy like Caleb Plant was saying, you mad because I don't wanna uh play rock, paper, scissors with the other 168 pound fighters in the division? What you want me to come do a us to do a kumbaya party all night long and us, you know, do all that? That that bothered me, you know, like, but yeah. Hey. And look, man, you know, Darrell and his family, they've shown some signs. His camp has shown some signs of just some tacky behavior, sucker punches and stuff like that. Uh, look, I'm not the biggest Caleb Plant fan. I really am not. In terms of, again, let's say, let's say uh, we, we're getting into fan favorites and stuff. I'm, I'm not that crazy about his fighting style. I don't, I, I don't think he's going to go down as one of the greats. But at the end of the day, I respect the man and, and – uh, yeah, I was just confused with the hate. That's a powerful word, dude. That's a powerful word. Like when you say hate, you know, you got to understand the meaning of hate. Like that's it's deceitful and a lot of other rigorous things that you could say when it comes to that word hate. And when you say you hate him, like what have Caleb Plant did to you to make you hate him? But Caleb Plant, he, he was hitting them word hurt. He said, Yeah, you a two time champion. Yeah. But when have you ever defended your belt? Because, yep. J.J., I'm like this. I agree with Caleb Plant on that. You could become a champion, right? But this is my thing right here. A real champion, you're going to be able to defend your belt. Yep. Agree or disagree? Agree 100%. You made that point yesterday, and it's kind of a known uh, concept in boxing. Uh, hell, not just boxing, sports, life. You bust your ass to become champ, but then what happens? You got the money. You got the fame. You got the glory. You got the riches. It's harder to, be, to stay champ. And and Caleb Plant made that very abundantly clear uh, that that yeah you've been champ before which hey two that's, times yeah that's a big big yeah. thing but he didn't keep that discipline he didn't keep whatever it is that a champ needs to do to to remain champion Caleb Plant brought that out today and it was and no they were under each other's skin. They, they were under. I was gonna say Caleb. <laughs> Caleb got under his, his skin, but <laughs> yeah. Durrell got under Caleb's skin too. Listen, I'm gonna say this. I hope this doesn't offend anybody. But the beginning of the press conference, Caleb Plant was Mister. I just want to thank Mister Al Heyman <laughs> and Mister. By the end of it, he's like, "Bro, what you ever do to me?" <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Whoa, whoa, yeah. So he's got that culture in him, man. Caleb Plant is a cultured. Uh, you know, he he vibes with with the people, with the community. Yeah, and, and I, I, th I think he's a guy who get along. Yeah, I think Caleb Plant is the type of guy who get along with um everybody, and I think that was a tasteless move by Anthony Durrell by uh, putting that post up saying, "I'll never let a white boy uh beat me." And what happened when? Yeah. what happened to Bernard well, Hopkins, he, man? The white boy not only did he beat him. It, I love you, Bernard. But yeah, we got to let the truth <laughs> yeah. come to the power, and the power come to the truth. That white boy knocked you out of that ring. Yeah, Joe Calzaghe <laughs> showed him why he's one so, of the goats, bro. So but. yeah, so like I think it was real tasteless, right? And I don't sure uh, for guys who taste this like that, who try to bring up race and, and, and bring race into the equation of anything you do. Just because I'm black, JJ, you're Mexican, JJ. I'm black, JJ. 
you're Mexican, <laughs> JJ. That doesn't mean anything. You understand me? Like, you may be better than me in playing basketball. Nope. But just because you're Mexican, that don't mean nothing. You're just a better basketball player than me. What? Oh, the stereotype? Oh, because I'm black, I'm supposed to be a better basketball player? What? What? Because you Mexican, you're supposed to do what? Play soccer better than me? Like, I hate that. You see black guys uh, coming in soccer. You see black guys coming in golf. You see Mexican guys coming in football. You know, you see it everywhere. Bro, so. I, I, got a good, I got a homie over in Mansfield, bro. Uh, his name is Key. And, uh, dude, you look at this dude. He looks like a baller, bro. He's about 6'3", got dreads, bulky as hell. Mm -hmm. He went to Texas A&M. Black dude, you know what he went to Texas A&M before? Mm -hmm. Swimming. He was a swimmer, bro. And, swimmer, yeah. and you never know, dude. And, and that's listen, man. We know, we know that racism exists. Mm -hmm. We're not blind, right? I'm a Mexican dude with tattoos and beards, yeah. and you know, and a beard, and and you know, the profiling exists. Hell, I've profiled. I pro, you know, we it's, we're human, right? Yeah. But. Whenever somebody just uses it as a crutch and, and just that's the first thing they run to, that's what bothers me. You know what I mean? Like to, to bring it to life, to bring it to surface when it doesn't necessarily need to be there. You know, if, raci if, raci if racism comes up and if, if somebody gets treated unfairly or if somebody gets abused because of racism, yeah, absolutely, we need to address it. But for it to be, I, I am not going to let a white boy beat me. No, the, the conversation should just be, look, I'm not going to lose this fight. I don't give a damn if you're yellow, black, green, whatever. I'm not going to lose the fight because I've been working hard. What the and, hell and color got to do with and it? And my thing is, too, you know, um, when somebody say something racist about black people, right, let's be honest. I mean, we know the history, but, you know, when people say stuff black, uh, racist about black people, you see black people jump out the gym. Oh, you're being racist. You're being racist. Well, I want to see if any black people going to speak up for that because that's trying. That's what, what Anthony Durrell did in that tasteless uh, moment that he did on Instagram. He's trying to do a divide and conquer between it. it ain't, and it ain't even about that, right? But I just want to see how uh, black people are going to show up and show out to be to uh, back away from them words that Anthony uh, Durrell said. Because when somebody say something racist about a black person, you see a lot of black people jump out the gym. But this dude clearly made a racist statement saying he ain't going to let no white boy beat him. I wonder how the black community yeah. is going to react to that. Yeah, and let's just be honest, bro. Bernard Hopkins got away with it because he's Bernard Hopkins. He's a legend, Hall of Famer. You know what I mean? And it didn't make it any better. It's a damn shame that if you're more famous, you can get away with more things. But listen, dude, it's the world we live in. It's up to us. It's up to us to acknowledge, okay, yeah, there's an issue. But this guy next to me, I love him. This guy is a human just like me, just like we talked about last night, man. So it's a very sensitive subject. Hell, honestly, it's, 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 it's scary to even bring up considering we're trying to build something here. Mm -hmm. But like you say, bringing the truth to the power. And the power, power to, yeah, to the truth, You know truth, what I mean? Like, yeah. It's something that... We need to work with collectively, man. Um, you know, obviously in boxing, there's dude, the Mexican versus the black damn thing is it drives me crazy, but it's there. I mean, we see it every day. Uh I, I hate that we see it. Like I hate that uh I get criticized if I criticize Canelo. I hate that if you criticize uh somebody or or like when you were supporting Canelo against L, I don't even remember, then they call you those words, you know, and uh I don't Again, I try my best when I'm arguing or when I'm debating with somebody. I try to understand them. I try to understand why they're saying what they're saying and why they feel those ways. I, I, I swear to God, I try to understand. And it took, it took a while, but listen, I will never know, Karay, what it feels like to walk in your shoes. I will Just like I would never yeah. know what it feels like to walk in your... Br yeah, I understand. Yeah. Go ahead. I, I, I will never know what it feels like. You know, you know my, I'm my... Fifth generation Mexican here, American, right? I've been, my folks have been here for a long time, but my grandparents were treated, they were treated unfairly, but not like your folks were treated. True. And, and I don't know what that pain feels like to know just a couple generations. So, I don't either. Uh, yeah. And, I'm just saying, yeah, I don't yeah. either. I'm just saying, like, I know the history of it, but I don't either. I'm just like you, JJ. I'm a generation. I grew up the same time. Did I see racism coming up? Yeah, but not. 
horrible yeah. like that. Obviously, you seen sure, racism man. too coming up. It's certain areas that you couldn't go to that you will get profiled. If you just think about us going to the airport, JJ, we go to the, <laughs> we go to the airport. <laughs> listen, 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 one time, one time I I was uh, working. I used to travel a lot. I'm a sales guy, right? I was in Missouri. Uh, uh, I think it was Joplin, Missouri. Maybe I don't remember, man, but. <laughs> I had to pee <laughs> bad, right? I had this beard out. I run into the hotel. I had my backpack. I threw my backpack on the couch, <laughs> run to the restroom, <laughs> and I run, I walk back out. Every person in there was on the phone, <laughs> scared. Like I, I told them, look, guys, I just had to pee, false alarm. But yeah, dude, we, 